Hi there, today I wanted to go over a tech tip relating to adding dimensions as custom properties. One of the common reasons people would ask to be able to do this is to add their bounding box dimensions as custom properties that they could label in their drawing. I'm going to go to the flatten view. I've created a sketch already just on my flat face. I've added two lines on our bounding box coincident to both the endpoints because you can see here when I try to add the dimension to the bounding box, even though I'm clicking, it won't let go. So I'm going to make two driven dimensions since they're already fully defined. And it doesn't matter that these are driven. Even if you wanted to do this for a dimension that you are driving, if you're making something like trim, you can still do that. So I've added both of those dimensions. And what I can do is I can go into equations and equations will allow me to see all of the dimensions that I've added, even ones that are driven. So I can add a global variable, say my bounding box length, and then simply click on the dimension. It will link it and evaluate. You can see I'm getting a warning. That's just saying that's a potential circular reference, but that's not really of concern to me. It's just saying that because it's fully defined. And then we'll go ahead and add the bounding box width, add the dimension, hit OK. Great. So we've gone ahead and added those global variables. And you can see, even though they're in a sketch that's only in our flat view, if we go from sheet metal and go to flatten and it suppresses, that's all right. We can still go back into equations and those dimensions are still existing, even though the sketch is suppressed. So to add these to custom properties, we'll just go over to file properties and see different property names. I'll go ahead and add one of a different name. So I can't use the same name as my equation. So I have to add BB length instead of bounding box length. And then we have all different types that we can evaluate to. I'll have it evaluate to the length. So this is how you can do it for individual um, lengths, widths. But the final part I'll show you is how to add an overall boundary box dimensions if that's something that you're interested in. So you can turn these into string of characters so I can create bounding box dimensions. I'll make this a text expression as well. And then I can do the dropdown for my first property that I'd like to add, but doing the dropdown again will just replace that property. So you can see here, I'll click. I can add an X to show that this is the marking the second dimension. And then I can just copy and paste from the property before. And I have my full evaluated value. So I hope this was helpful in being able to add different dimensions as custom properties. See you in the next one.